consecrated him amazing grace.
God and being God all by itself. That same God that, that spoke into existence everything. We thank you for being that same one who died on the cross. For no rich like me. Father, we realize that it's preach time and we thank you for that. Same for our visitors. We thank God for you this morning. Even our members. You could have went somewhere else this morning. You could have stayed in bed this morning. But we thank God that you are obedient to the Spirit. Reverend Walker, we thank you for reading that scripture that was assigned to you. I like the way he did it. Uh, you can tell that he's learned. Oftentimes you ask the preacher to give the scripture and they get up and they talk about what happened down the street and uh, they, 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 they solicit prayer for them over there and then they, they do everything, then they finally make it to the scripture. But thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for that. We want to focus on that 26th verse. When it said, but his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillow of salt. We want to talk about, we realize she looked back, but the reason she looked back was she had a desire to go back. So we want to talk about this morning, don't turn back. Don't turn back. In order to look back, she had to turn back. Now, I was very curious when I when the Lord put this scripture into my spirit who actually was Lot's wife I searched scripture uh, by way of technology I couldn't find the name of Lot's wife the Bible is anointed and appointed and designed and given by the Lord God and for some reason, he didn't tell us who she was. I believe if he would have told us her name, we probably would have used that name a lot in our preaching. In 
in our teaching. Sue looked back, and every Sue in the church would help. So I thank God for him being so intelligent, realizing we are not as intelligent as he. So when we look at Lot's wife, a name wasn't given. So let me encourage you by saying all of us can fit that role. Now looking back. Today, brothers and sisters, by way of introduction, I want to say that there are too many. And when I say too many, I'm not talking about the world, but I'm talking about us. There are too many of us living on the edge. It don't take much. Yeah. To take us back to where we once was. Right. Too many of us are living too close to jumping back yeah. into our past. All right. We're so close to the edge to oftentimes people are afraid to say something to us. Right. Because that old man yeah. might come out. We're so close to living on the edge, we got one foot on the ground, and another one, you can might as well say in the grave. Yeah. We're just that close to falling back to where we once were. Well. We need to know that the old man, and I, when I say the old man, I'm talking about the old woman too. The old man bounds us to our past. All right. yeah. Huh? That old man keep us chained yeah, yeah. to our past failures, to yeah. our past despair. Yeah. The old has a way of captivating our attention. Yeah, yeah. It has a way of captivating our attention. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, we cannot move forward until we stop focusing on what has happened back there. We can't move forward until we stop focusing on our past failures, those things that we have failed at, those things that put us down. We cannot move forward until we stop focusing right, and wanting to go back yeah. to those old things. If we're ever going to grow yeah. as a body in Christ, as baptized believers in Christ, we cannot stay back there. We cannot stay in the past. Brothers and sisters, the past is where we started. It's certainly not where we want to end up. No, it's not where we want to end up. We started there, but we definitely do not want to end up there. When we consider turning back, Brothers and sisters, we, got, we must question ourselves. We must inventory ourselves. We must evaluate ourselves. We must ask ourselves, how bad was it when we was back there? How bad was it before God actually pulled us out of the pits of sin? We have to ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, if I go back, how will it affect my family? Yeah. How will it affect my spouse? How will it affect my children? How will it affect my church family? And most of all, how will it affect the Lord? Yeah. We have to ask ourselves these things. If we go back, we have to ask ourselves, how much worse off will I be? If I go back to the same old stuff. We find ourselves as Christians always doing a balancing act. All right. Standing on the bubble, if you if you will. Standing on the edge. Standing on the tightrope of our future and our past. We do a balancing act of our faithfulness to God. And the reason we do that is simply because when we became Christians, we always thought that we was going to get the results. Soon as we go down on our knees, we yeah. thought God was going to answer our prayer before we stood up. So therefore, we find ourselves questioning our faithfulness 
we find ourselves going back and looking back in the past. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we expect God to answer our prayers at the drop of a hat. Yeah. We expect results before we get off our knees. Uh -huh. But our, in other words, people turn back. Yeah, yeah. People look back because God does not produce All right. as fast as they want them want yeah. All right. to produce. And when that don't happen, we become discouraged. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We become discouraged in our faith walk. And whenever we become discouraged, you need to know that's when the enemy sees an opening. All right. yeah. Yeah. Whenever we're down on our luck, <laughs> the enemy sees an opening. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever our bodies are sick, yeah. the enemy sees an opening. Yeah. Whenever we pray, we pray, we pray, and our prayers seem not to be answered. Yeah. Oh, that's when Satan moves in. Right. Yeah. What does he do? He says, I told you so. Yeah. Yeah. You had it made when you was back there. Yeah. Now look at you. Walking around here talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. But look at you. You're sick. All right. <laughs> Won't he move in? Yeah. And that brothers and sisters, cause us to every now and then look back. I want to encourage you to keep your hand in God's hand. Continue to look forward. It even happens, brothers and sisters, in our ministries. We wonder, we wonder, I'm preaching every day, I'm teaching every day, and I see no results. All right. I get up every Sunday morning, every Wednesday. I come to church, but I see no results. All right. And it All causes right. us to look back from whence we came. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When it comes to our ministries, Hallelujah. I have witnessed this ever since I've been preaching. Yeah. There are some people that are on fire for God. All yeah. right now. Oh, they're hot. Yeah. Uh -huh. But as soon as something happens, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. They become nothing more than a puff of smoke. Yeah. The fire will go out. Yeah, yeah. Soon as somebody step on your toes. Yeah, yeah. The fire goes out. As soon as something don't go right, yeah. the fire goes out. Yeah. We become nothing more than a burnt out pile of ashes. Alright. Useless. Burnt out fire. Yeah. But if we're going to make it down that narrow road, yeah. I'm talking about the one that leads to heaven. Yeah. We gotta walk down in the middle of the road. Uh -huh. We gotta get off the edge. And yeah. We gotta stop looking back. Because if you're walking on the edge of the road, eventually yeah. you will fall off. Uh -huh. If you're always walking off the edge, eventually you will lose your footing. Yeah, yeah. And you will fall right back into the things that you used to do. Yes, sir. All right. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Whenever we lose our grip, yeah. whenever we lose our footing, whenever we fall off that narrow road, yeah, yeah. the first thing we do we reach up and grab anything and anybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. And we end up pulling them in oh, with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Look at that wayward child. Don't that wayward child pull in the family? Yeah. Pull the mother and, and the father in? Don't your friends be want to pull you right back into the things that you once yeah. was in? Want to take you back to where you once was. All right. So what am I saying? We find ourselves looking back, yes. falling, and we yes. grab hold to anybody, yes. and we usually pull them yes. in with us. How do I know what I'm talking about? I've seen parents mortgage.
into their home to get that child out of jail for the 10th or 11th time. Call the pastor, Pook you in jail again. Pull you down with them. Whenever they fall, they just reach. Whoever they catch hope to, if you're not careful, they will pull you in with them. Somebody here today may be living on the edge. But I want you to put your hand in God's hand. I want you to fight to hang on to his hand. And you need to know that if you let go of God's hand, you have let go of the only thing that can help you. You have let go of the only thing that can deliver you when you let go of God's hand. We can't always be looking back. Whenever we look back, we bring, and whenever we fall back, we bring what is our friend. We bring with us our family. And we bring with us the church. And whenever we consider looking back, as I said, we ought to consider how will it affect the people that's around us. But most of all, we ought to consider what Jesus would think about us. Every now and then, I realize that somebody want to turn back. I realize every now and then, even in the church, there's somebody want to look back. But can I encourage you to keep your eyes on the Lord? When we look at the text, the Bible said that the city was about to be destroyed. Can I get a witness? The angels came and urged Lot. He told Lot to hurry, take your wife and your two daughters. And he told them to flee from the city. Can I get a witness? For the Bible said that Sodom and Gomorrah was about to be destroyed. The angels told Lot, if you don't leave the city, he said, you and your family will be swept away and receive the same punishment that some and Gomorrah would receive. Can I get a witness? Lot, amen, was just like most of us. For he hesitated. But what I like about the good Lord yeah. The Bible said when he hesitated, yeah. the angels grabbed him by the hand yeah. and led them out of the city. Yeah. 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 The angels grabbed Lot. Yeah. The angels grabbed Lot's wife. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but he grabbed his children yeah. and led them out of harm's way. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that if you put your hand in God's hand, He will lead you and He will guide you. Can I get a witness? But as soon, amen, as the angels brought them out of the city, the angels told Lot and his family, He said, take your family can I get a witness? Yes. And don't look back. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. But Lot, just like the most of us, yeah. amen, he refused to flee to the mountains, yeah. just like the angels said, but yet he, he flee to a city called oh, yeah. Zoe. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And as soon, amen, as Lot got to the city, yeah. Lot's wife, who has no name. Can I get a witness? I might want to call her Michael. Can I get a witness? But as soon as they got to safety, she had a desire to go back. Can I get a witness? 
She had a desire to look back yeah. from whence she came. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. She didn't want to go back to the old small town living. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. She wanted to be a part of the big lights. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. But Lot's wife, amen, looked back. Yeah. And the Bible says she became, amen, a pillar of salt. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Every now and then you may want to look back. Yeah. Every now and then you may want to go back. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. But I encourage you this morning to keep marching forward. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Move off the edge of going back. Yeah. Move off the edge, amen, of looking back. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Move off the edge of giving up. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Ain't God all right? Yeah. Put your hands in God's hand. Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. Let this God that I'm talking to you about lead you. Let him guide you unto safety. Ain't God all right? It doesn't matter what you need. All you got to do is call on him. Ain't God all right? Call on him whenever you're in trouble. Ain't God all right? Call on him whenever you're sick. Can I get a witness? You can call him early in the morning. Ain't God all right? Call him in the noonday hour. Ain't God all right? Late in the midnight hour. Ain't God all right? Why should you call on him? But let me help you with that. Ain't God all right? This God I'm talking about, he is the lily of the valley. Ain't God all right? He's the bright and morning star. Ain't God all right? He's the beginning. He's the end. He's right now. He's at the wild. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He's the first. He's the last. He's right now. He's at the wild. He's over there. He's back there. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? How do I know this? The songwriter said, I see the lightning flash. I heard the thunder roll. Ain't God all right? I see sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Ain't God all right? But I heard, I heard, I heard the voice of Jesus. Ain't God all right? Telling me to steal and fight on. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I want you to know today, church, I'm glad that I know the man. Ain't God all right? I'm glad that I know Jesus.
until the stars fail. Hey, God, all right. Let me tell you something. I'm glad this God I'm talking about didn't stay dead. Say they talked about Christ. 
certainly they're going to talk about you and I. Yes, <laughs> what they do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you're in the church, that don't mean you get a discount. Yes, right. Coming at you too. Hallelujah. There's no discount on us. Sing the choir. Sing the choir. Hallelujah.
so I'll give me some thumbs up or something. Because I care about my church family. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. The word is gone forth. We have moved up to our communion. Something that we are commanded to do, brothers and sisters. Not something that we do out of tradition, but it's because we are required to do it. We are to remember what he did. Remember his shed blood. And he shed on Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My brothers. Lord, Father God, we thank you right now for this time of communion, this time of remembrance. Uh, we thank you for your obedience, uh, that we, your obedience and our obedience, your, your death on the cross, your shed blood, and your broken body. And Father, we pray now that you turn this bread and this wine, turn it from a physical to a spiritual. We pray, Lord, that we are able to search our own hearts, that we may not drink damnation on ourselves. Father, we pray now that you bless everyone that partake of it, those that had a desire to, but cannot. Father, we pray and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. In the Lord's name say, Amen.
what was done on the cross. It was that Friday in the upper room. The disciples didn't understand. Christ had yet, although he was about to be betrayed, he still had a message. And that message was, I'm going to give my own life. And I'm going to lay it down. Yeah. They didn't understand how you're going to do that, and then he talked about picking it up again. Yeah. But certainly, now we have proof. One is in the Bible. Yeah. Two, the grave is empty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We serve a living God. Yeah. Yeah. Christ took the bread, broke it, blessed it, and said, Take this, eat. What represents it? Doing so, Christ broke the bread and just lets us know that he held his own life in his hand. No one else. Then he took the cup. And again, the cup represented his shed blood. Again, he held it in his own hand. He took it, blessed it, and said, Drink ye. It represents the New Testament.
Got the brand new gloves on and everything. <coughs> That's a growth. We thank God for you. We thank God for Zion Grove and we thank God for all those who are here today. I dare not close without giving Reverend Walker the opportunity to, to uh, greet us, let us know who he is and where he's from. Amen. So that we can uh, encourage him to come back. Amen. Um, giving all honor and respect to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, really, Pastor, I'm not a stranger. I mean, because <laughs> really everybody here are um, um, family. You know, I grew up in Cavs Creek, so I know pretty much everybody. Everybody know me. They know my family. So I'm glad to be here, and I thank God for allowing me to be in his presence. Amen. I appreciate it. Amen. Make sure that you leave us your contact information. Amen. Uh, although everybody knows you. <laughs> leave it anyway. We thank God for you. We thank you for being obedient to the Spirit. We're thankful that the Spirit led you to us this morning. Amen. Again, uh, we will be traveling to Gardo First Baptist uh, for the homecoming. They are preparing food for us, so uh, let us go prepare to eat and, and fellowship, and, uh, and, 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 and let's have a good time fellowshiping in the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Again, Reverend, we thank you. All of our officers, we thank you. Amen. And all of our church members, we thank you so very much. Our mothers, we thank you. Amen. Amen. For Hardy, I've been cooking hot wings ever since that. That's Saturday. You had me out there. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Things are good. Let us pray. Lord, Father God, we thank you right now for what has taken place. We thank you, Lord, for your shed blood, for what you did on the cross. Father, we pray now that uh, you give us the strength to keep pressing forward, uh, to not dwell so much on our past problems and uh, our past failures. Let us look toward heaven, Lord, yeah, yeah. and let us continue to press forward toward the prize. Lord. We realize that Jesus Christ, you are that prize. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within us all, henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children say, Amen.